the ingress of air to the lungs and its expulsion back out, occurring some 20,000 times a day, goes largely unnoticed for most of us. Breathing is subliminal. When it's in sound order, it's taken for granted until something goes wrong. Emphysema, where lung tissue is damaged, and chronic bronchitis, where airways become inflamed, are both linked to cigarette smoking, though there are other surprising causes which we will look at. Both diseases fall under the banner of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. COPD is the third leading cause of death in the world and the sixth leading cause of death here in America. Here its impact is felt by nearly 16 million people, with many more suffering COPD without knowing that they have it. As a pulmonologist, Dr. Roger Schwelt treats respiratory disease, including COPD. Today he will shed light on how someone can know if they have COPD, how something as seemingly harmless as cooking could lead to COPD, and what can be done medicinally and naturally to treat this disease. Welcome to Vital Science, where we learn how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Schwelt's current practice is in Beaumont, California, where he is a critical care physician, pulmonologist, and sleep physician at Optum, California. His fourth board certification is in internal medicine. Yes, well, COPD really manifests itself in two different ways. Uh, as the name implies, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is an obstruction to airflow. So when people try to breathe in, the air goes in, but when they try to breathe out, the small airways that conduct that uh, air, that oxygen down into the lower aspects of our lung become obstructed and it's hard and difficult to get the air out. It takes more time. The flow rates are reduced and that's really the hallmark of COPD. And you can imagine that if it's taking more time to get the air out of your lungs, you're not going to be able to take that next breath in as quickly. You may realize that when you're doing exertive work or you're exercising, you're walking, your respiratory rate tends to speed up. Well, the problem is, is that if that next breath is coming in before you get the previous breath out, you're going to do something what we call breath stack, and that's going to make your lungs hyperinflated. And that's the other aspect of COPD is hyperinflation of one's lungs. So imagine taking a breath in, and then that's your new baseline in terms of where you can breathe from. You can see that you have less room to take another breath in. And so one of the hallmarks of COPD is that you can't really do a lot of work. You can't exert yourself without becoming uh, short of breath. And that's, those are the, the major issues with uh, COPD. I know this is quite widespread in America. What is the reason for that? Firstly, how widespread is it? And why do we see it occurring so frequently? Yeah, well, it's one of the most common lung diseases uh, that we see in, in the chronic uh, elderly and actually middle-aged population. It takes time for this to happen. And if you can imagine your lungs as being a balloon, you know, when you blow up a balloon, it is elastic. It, it tends to inflate. But then also when you release the air out of that balloon, it tends to deflate. And that's because of the elastic fibers, if you will, in the balloon that causes the lungs to deflate. Um, that's exactly what our lungs have as well. They also have elastic fibers. But unfortunately, pollutants, smoking, especially smoking, um, anything that you breathe in that tends to damage those elastic fibers are going to cause your lungs not to deflate, not to come back to a regular size, but to in fact stay inflated. And you can kind of uh, sense what these elastic fibers are doing um, if you take a deep breath in. And then you just sort of relax and let it let it come out on its own. You'll realize that your breath comes to a specific period or a specific volume that allows the air to come out. Well, that relaxing and letting that air come out is a function of those elastic fibers. Those elastic fibers, unfortunately, are the only elastic fibers that you're born with. And as those elastic fibers tend to be destroyed over time, you lose that ability to have that air come out. And as a result, you become hyperinflated. And the major causes of that elastic fiber destruction is smoking. That's the major reason why people will develop COPD. There are other reasons why people can develop COPD, uh, especially around the world. There are places or, or cultures where a lot of indoor cooking 
uh, is, is done. And so that smoke that comes up from cooking indoors without appropriate ventilation can also cause COPD. Is there a particular type of cooking that, that people should be concerned about that might trigger this? Yeah, any type of biomass cooking, basically when you're burning fuels inside uh, of a home which is not well ventilated, that smoke, that production of combustion, which is exactly the same type of issue that happens with smoking, can cause a COPD. So this is a, a very important uh, cause of COPD that is not related to smoking. I was wondering if you could elaborate a bit more on that when you say biomass, what should people particularly be concerned about? Yeah, so when I say biomass, I mean, I'm talking about uh, burning basically uh, fuels uh, inside the home that where there's not good ventilation. Uh, so the, the uh, product of cooking is basically where you combust materials that are just going to cause heat so you can boil. And I, so I'm not talking about barbecuing outside or, you know, using a uh, propane outside for your, you know, your barbecue that you do on a, on a summer afternoon because you're in generally well ventilated areas. But um, inside, if unless you've got a pretty good hood that's sucking up the, the fumes and things from your stove. So, you know, we're not too concerned about in that sort of a situation. But if you're in a home where there is cooking going on and there isn't good ventilation and um, the smoke or the the effects of that cooking can accumulate in the home, that can cause uh, damage over some period of time, whether that is you're using wood to burn or you're using uh, grass or fuel. This, this is not as much typically seen in the United States necessarily, but it can be. Uh, but we're talking about around the world where maybe the effects of the guidelines for building of homes and and what's going on in the homes in terms of ventilation or especially around the cooking areas of the home where that can get eliminated why is this important um for the practice of medicine here in the united states obviously we have many people coming in to the united states that may have grown up in these environments and it's important that, that even if they are not smoking but if they're the ones that are responsible for doing the cooking in the home uh, and they are exposed to this on a regular basis, that may explain why they may have the uh, degree of COPD that they may have. The other uh, one that I was going to mention as well, that it only accounts for maybe 1% of all cases of COPD is a genetic condition where there is a protein called alpha-1 antitrypsin, and that's the name of the disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. This protein goes around and protects the elastic fibers. And so that uh, damage to these elastic fibers is significantly reduced when you have both uh, or even one copy of the gene that protects it. But there are some people that inherit deficient copies from both parents, and so they really have no protection from destruction of the elastic fibers. And these are the type of patients that we see that have accelerated COPD. They may smoke, for instance, and instead, instead of getting COPD in their 60s, they get COPD in their 40s. It's uncommon, but when I see patients, especially that are very young, that have COPD, I usually test for this genetic disease called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. 